guys, this is Ashley back with another video. Before we get into the video, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. So let's start off with Euphoria, which is one of my favorite shows. It's on HBO Max. Um, but allegedly, there's a lot of drama behind the scenes. And allegedly, the girl that plays Kat, um, she might not be in season three. Allegedly, she has walked off set multiple times. And allegedly, she wants to quit. Because she does not like the direction that her character is going, okay? Now, on the show, um, she's having relationship issues. And she's basically Maddie's sidekick. But she really doesn't have a long-term storyline. So maybe that's why she's upset. So that's going to be interesting to see her not being on the show in season three if she does quit. Um, and allegedly next episode, somebody does die. Um, people are speculating that it could be Fez or his brother, which I'm definitely not too happy about because I like Fez, but I will say, because there's only one episode left that the season was pretty decent. But um, there was a lot of unnecessary storylines, okay? Um, Nate's dad, um, he reveals in the season that he is actually gay. Um, I don't feel like that was really that important, considering that he had a small role in Euphoria. But I think the reason why they put that in the storyline is because um, Nate Jacobs actually gets exposed for being, you know, gay last episode. So it makes a lot of sense when you watch the full season. Then we don't really know what happened with McKay and Cassie. I think getting rid of him was not the smartest thing to do because now everybody's wondering what happened to McKay. And he was the only black person on the show. Moving on to Nicki Minaj. Um, it seems as though she is not too happy with the situation. Um, she did some subliminal tweets. You know, she put the cucumber emoji. And then she also put up the deuces emoji. And then she also basically said on Instagram that she has no collaborations coming. Which I definitely do not believe. I think that she's just saying that because... She's not happy that Benzino spilled the beans. And then also Quayla Ray tweeted, every time I turn my head, some evil shit happens, okay? Now, to me, the collaboration is not necessary, okay? Um, it's getting a lot of mixed reactions because, you know, Nicki Minaj turned down Dolce Cat three times. But Quayla Ray also went on live to discuss a few things in regards to her album. The album is dropping in March. And this is what she said on Instagram Live. Give me the album since we're talking about it. Because my album's dropping March XX22. So March XX22. XX is one of the days. Okay. Everybody knows music drops every Friday. So March XX22. 22 is the day I'm dropping my album. I have a total of 20 songs. And um, I have a total of 20 songs. I have um, um, I have a total of 20 songs. I have um, I got some females on there. I got a fight lineup with some girls too. It's crazy. And then the boys... Shout out to my um I said this before I got the whole New York on my album. I feel like I have most of it is New York. Like I got all New York. So New York would come in crazy. Here's the thing. Um, I really don't feel like Nikki needs to be collaborating with Quayla Ray. She can collab with whoever she wants to collab with. But at the end of the day, if she collaborates with Quayla Ray and the record don't do well, then I feel like the fans Sometimes they get blamed for the Jesse Nelson collaboration she did that nobody really wanted, but you know, she was asked to do it because Jesse Nelson is signed to Republic. Um, same thing as Coyle Ray, she's signed to Republic too. Um, Nikki killed her verse, but the song was still trash, 
And nobody cared about that record. You guys were saying, oh, the record is good in the comments, but clearly nobody was really supporting it because it did not even chart on the Billboard Hot 100. You can say, oh, well, it charted in the UK. That was not the reason for the Nicki Minaj collaboration. They wanted the record to do well in the US. That's why Nicki was on the record. Okay, um, Jesse Nelson is nothing but a broke down Britney Spears to me. I really don't think she's all the way that talented. Like I said before, that was an unnecessary um, collaboration. And then people get upset when the songs don't do well. Well, that was a collaboration she didn't need to do. Okay, so I feel like Nikki needs to be careful about collaborating with people just because they show love. She's not the only artist that does that, but sometimes it can backfire because at the end of the day, I see a lot of people saying that they're not going to support the record. If it comes out, okay, which is not a good thing for people to already be boycotting the record before it even comes out, before they even hear it. And yes, Nikki could collaborate with whoever she wants to collaborate with, but then if people don't support the record, whose fault is it? Okay, if people don't really support the record, and you can't say, oh, well, we support every record because the Jesse Nelson collaboration didn't do well, and neither did the Polo G record. Now, people are wondering why she's not giving Dolce Cat the time of day. Well, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that, like I said before, Dolce Cat still works with Nicki Minaj's old manager. She has three management companies that she works with, not just Saul. Um, And then also, Dolce Cat does mimic Nicki Minaj to a certain degree. Now, I don't feel like Nicki hates Dolce Cat, but I don't think she really likes when somebody mimics her. Or when people compare Dolce Cat to Nicki Minaj and there's a lot of hybrid barbs, I don't think she really likes that, okay? Because Dolce Cat cannot be compared to Nicki Minaj on any type of level, okay? Moving on from that, though, um, Bussin is supposed to debut on Billboard at number 23 or number 25, okay? And then also, Do We Have a Problem is supposed to fall to number 31 or 32 um, on the Billboard charts. So like I said before, people have to stream the record. We have playlisting. Um, You know, we're getting radio play. So the fans are supposed to support. You guys were bragging about Bussin, yet you guys don't want to push Bussin no more. When I've already said, do we have a problem was the better record, okay? But nobody listened to me until Bussin came out. So anyway, moving on from that, though, it looks like Kanye West allegedly turned down a hundred million dollar deal from Apple uh, when it came to Donda 2. They wanted to exclusively have the album on Apple Music and they were going to give him a hundred million dollars and he turned it down because he has his own streaming service which is the STEM player, okay, that he's selling for $200. Um, And it looks like he sold a million copies already. So he has his own cult following that is supporting his music. My whole thing is with um, Kanye West, I do feel like $200 is a little high for that album, okay? Um, And I don't really hear a lot of people really talking about this album, um, it's out, but nobody's really talking about it. Nobody is saying that the album is fire. So I feel like a lot of people might have wasted their money. Okay. And then on top of that, Billboard may not even count all of Kanye West's sales because they usually go to the label to verify streams and sales, um, you know, an artist does. And Kanye could easily finesse and say that he did a billion first week. You know, he has a big ego. He's not going to really tell the real numbers. According to him, he's already sold a million copies. So with that being said, I think he's going to have an issue with Billboard counting his numbers and streams because it's not on any streaming platforms. Nobody really knows if he's telling the truth or not. Okay, so let me know what you guys think about that. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and have an amazing day.